time. All right, we have uh, joining us here in the studio Myron Abel from the Competitive Enterprise Institute here in Washington. Unfortunately, he's not in a position to hear uh, some of the comments you've been making. I'll get your take, and uh, my apologies for the, the technical uh, uh, situation here. But uh, your own take on this report that we got from the National Petroleum Council. And uh, uh, Mr. DeFay says this argument that the peak oil has indeed uh, happened, taken place. That's indeed the reality here. This report uh, doesn't, uh, in essence, uh, uh, give that enough, uh, give that enough uh, of, a, of a voice. Well, the, the people who predict peak oil uh, may be correct, but they've been predicting it very soon since oil was discovered in 1859 or so in Pennsylvania in Titusville. Uh, in the 1930s, the Department of the Interior said that we would run out of oil by 1940. So these predictions have been around for a long time, and I think uh, they ignore uh, technological progress and the fact that we are that the that the oil industry is is not only uh, increasing its technological sophistication and ability to to uh, pull oil uh, out of the ground more and more cheaply from deeper and deeper but uh, different kinds of oil if, if it were just light sweet crude oil yes there would be peak oil but of course there are all kinds of other oil resources for example there's a huge increase in production in Alberta in the tar sands in this country we have huge quantities of uh, shale oil and so uh, these kinds of unconventional resources have to be added to the to the pot, and it, and also the fact that, for example, oil companies are now producing oil at 30,000 feet below the surface more cheaply than they were 20 years ago at 5,000 feet. So I, I I think that this peak oil stuff it may eventually come true, I suppose, but I, I wouldn't put too much uh, I wouldn't put a bet on it. I'm going to get back to Mr. DeFay in San Diego in just a moment, but let me ask you about uh, at least the one aspect of this report. This report does not subscribe to the notion that peak oil is taking place. Some of the energy industry folks who are part of this report, in essence, say that uh, supplies are, are abundant. But the fact that we now have industry folks saying that supply is, uh, is not going to keep pace with demand and that the government's own forecasts here uh, indicate that we might be short by 11 percent by 2030. Doesn't that indicate something's going on here in terms of the supply situation? We're not producing as much and perhaps peak oil is, is something that may be a reality. Yes, if peak oil is a reality, it's not because of a lack of the resource. It's because of political obstacles. And I think you touched on this earlier. Uh, most of the world's oil is controlled by governments uh, and they have semi-competent to incompetent nationalized companies which produce and, and find the oil. Uh, and in, even in this country where uh, we have uh, big oil companies and small oil companies and wildcatters looking for oil, there are huge obstacles to getting it out of the ground. The Congress has roped off most of the North Slope of Alaska to production. 85% uh, of our offshore areas are uh, under moratorium by Congress. We're the only country in the world that has significant offshore resources that we aren't exploiting. And so I think, uh, yes, we could reach peak oil, but it won't be due to the resource constraint. It will be due to political obstacles. Mr. DeFez, uh, really quickly, uh, your take on the notion that uh, oil shale, oil sands, that's the true opportunity. You're not taking that into account. No, I am including the Canadian tar sands production in my statistics, not excluding it at all. It's in there and it is growing, but it's not growing as fast as demand worldwide is growing. So the problem is going to be a squeeze on production capacity, not on the total amount of oil that's out there that might be recovered someday. Is this enough, uh, Myra Bell, uh, in just a couple seconds left here, is this enough to at least scare people into thinking that maybe we need to look at other things besides oil in terms of energy supplies? Uh, well, I think the report uh, suggested that we need to remove the obstacles to producing more oil as well as look at alternatives. And I think, you know, in a competitive marketplace, uh, there's room for all products that can come to the market at a good price. So I, I, I hope that the report will be taken seriously, not just this one little bit of it. Myron and Bell, John DeFace, thanks to both of you. We're back after this short break here on My Impulses.